All right, everyone. Chill. In a world oversaturated with superhero movies, it goes without saying that not all of them are super, but what makes the good ones great? Gloriously epic team-ups, tragic deaths of previously invincible badasses? Keep watching to see what we think are the 55 greatest superhero movies ever made. Short order cook Frank Darbo has lived a lackluster life until he becomes a crimson bolt after hearing the word of God, or at least what he thinks is the word of God. With the help of his sidekick, Bolty, he sets out to rescue his estranged wife from a brutal man by any means necessary. The heroes in Super wear impractically bright costumes that look straight out of the most kid-friendly comics ever created, but their crime-fighting techniques look more like the unsettling violence of The Sopranos. James Gunn's first feature-length foray into the land of capes and masks unfolds as a commentary on the superhero genre's contradictions, and serves as a trial for concepts he'd revisit in HBO's Peacemaker. The sequel to Deadpool cranks up the gleefully R-rated gore, general zaniness, and earnest heart that lots of folks connected with the first time around. Brawny time traveler Cable zaps into Wade Wilson's reality to slaughter a future tyrant. However, the alleged baddie is a troubled kid Wade can't help but protect. Prison breaks, mutant team-ups, and ludicrous violence ensue. Deadpool 2 successfully introduces time travel to Deadpool's proverbial toolbox of story devices. Zazzy Beats effortlessly prompts discussions about whether a Domino solo movie could work with her winning performance, and opening theme Ashes marks Celine Dion's finest film soundtrack effort since Titanic. A devout Mormon becomes an adult film star who never actually does the deed on camera. However, he does fight crime with his unmatched martial arts expertise and the Orgasmerator ray gun, the effects of which will leave up to your imagination. The 90s produced as many superhero spoofs as earnest entries into the genre, but Orgasmo is not interested in making fun of superheroes exclusively. An early feature by South Park creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker, Orgasmo also skewers both organized religion and the adult film industry. Did we mention this movie is NC-17? Because it's NC-17. Captain America Civil War sees Captain America and Iron Man driven apart by the Sokovia Accords, a proposed set of regulations for the Avengers and their extra-human ilk. It's also the Marvel movie where Spider-Man and Black Panther show up. The Russo brothers focus on spectacular action set pieces and expanding the MCU without dwelling excessively on the politics of the matter. Watching Spider-Man team up with Iron Man is worth the price of admission alone, but contemplation on the Avengers' legality makes the whole affair uniquely intriguing. A quintessential childhood film for anyone born in the 1980s, the first cinematic journey of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles draws heavily from the original comics by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. A mysterious crime wave is engulfing New York City, and only the Turtles can stop it. But when their wise rap mentor Master Splinter is captured, what are they supposed to do? Team up with new allies like news reporter April O'Neil, of course. Considering its technical innovations and kid-friendly metaphors for grown-up subject matter, this movie can hold its own alongside any classic fantasy film of the 80s. Baymax is a helpful robot made of balloons. His creator's little brother, irreverent teenager hero, builds him a flying mech suit, and the pair go on adventures with a social circle of similarly brilliant teenagers. But a microbot-wielding villain is menacing the city, and hero is, after all, just a kid. Can he possibly stop this masked menace? With Baymax's help, it just might be possible. What you might not realize is that Big Hero 6 is based on a Marvel comic from the 90s, so its comic book pedigree is real, making it a movie not to be missed. While the 1960s Batman series doesn't take itself seriously, the most swinging version of the dynamic duo aren't messing around in their quest to make Gotham a safe and prosperous city. You might even say this Batman and Robin are serious men in an unserious world. In this movie, which spins out from the TV program, the not-so-dark knight's most devious foes form an organization known as the United Underworld, whose plot involves turning diplomats into powder with a dehydration gun. On a separate occasion, their plot involves an exploding shark. Yes, it's goofy and fun as heck. Joaquin Phoenix's Oscar-winning performance as the Clown Prince of Crime runs the gamut from tragic to blisteringly psychotic in Joker, a unique supervillain in name only film. Arthur Fleck lives a disappointing life in a disappointing world. As his stand-up career flatlines, he becomes enmeshed in the violence that defines Gotham City, and nothing is ever the same again. A nihilistic exploration of a character moviegoers never seem to tire of, Joker is a memorable vision of misery and madness. Immortal Frenemies Charles Xavier and Magneto ally in X-Men First Class, a movie that explores the X-Men's early 60s origins. Brought together by ideals and experience, the two men head up what will become Marvel's most famous band of mutants. But as the world changes, so do they. Which future should mutants pursue? Xavier's vision of coexistence or Magneto's dream of mutant supremacy? The fact that this film is still entertaining despite having barely any Wolverine in it is a testimony to its originality. 
Colloquially referred to as the Snyder Cut, Zack Snyder's Justice League is a maximalist take on the DC Universe and a totally unprecedented do-over of a major studio blockbuster. In the movie, Batman and Wonder Woman must rally Earth's metahumans to fend off an invasion from the planet Apocalypse. It's a noble effort, but what hope does the fledgling Justice League have against Darkseid when Earth's greatest champion, the Man of Steel, is dead? Aquaman, Cyborg, and The Flash rally regardless, but they might not be prepared for what's facing them. A reverent depiction of one of the most enduring origin stories in comics, Wonder Woman stands apart from the pack. After pilot Steve Trevor crash lands on the island of the Amazons, Princess Diana must join the fight ravaging the planet. But Ares, immortal enemy of peace, is ready for her and her god-killing sword. A sweeping story packed with engaging performances, Wonder Woman does right by a comic book icon as a World War I period piece with leads who have vivid romantic chemistry. Marvel Studios and Sony finally put their differences aside, allowing Spider-Man to take his rightful place at the heart of the MCU and Homecoming. In his first headlining gig in the red and blue spandex, Tom Holland's Peter Parker squares off against a sinister vulture. But the brand new Spidey is also just a kid who wants to enjoy high school, go to parties, and maybe romance his crush. What's a super-powered teen to do? Try to balance it all, of course. This take on the classic hero is particularly enlivened by Peter's friends Ned and MJ, played winningly by Jacob Batalon and Zendaya. Batman headlines a lot of terrific movies, but this is the only one that ends with everyone in Gotham City dancing and singing along to a song about friendship. This refreshingly offbeat spin on The Dark Knight pits him against the Joker, but also himself. People, especially the eager young Robin, want to be a part of his life, but he insists on solitude. Can Batman learn the value of friendship before it's too late? The Lego Batman movie is a celebration of comic book tropes, found families, and, of course, little plastic building blocks. A wildly underrated addition to the Ninja Turtles franchise, 2007's TMNT brings the brothers back together after an extended sabbatical from anti-evil activity. There's an immortal warlord on the loose. But can they reunite in time to stop him? While well, some adaptations barely differentiate the turtles from each other, in this movie, Leo, Raph, Mikey, and Don all come across as distinct individuals bonded by a shared history, rather than just a mutual appreciation of pizzas and catchphrases. That's not to say the turtles don't like pizza or catchphrases in this movie, though. They absolutely do. Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn breaks up with the Joker after Suicide Squad and embarks upon a crime spree of her own in Birds of Prey. Members of Gotham's supporting cast previously unseen in the DC Extended Universe, Huntress, Renee Montoya, Cassandra Kane, and Black Canary, make their first appearances here as Harley's unlikely band of butt-kickers. They're out to take down underworld boss Roman Sionis, but can they truly tackle his empire of cruelty? The energy of this movie is Deadpool meets Heathers on literal roller skates. While wearing a stolen rocket pack invented by eccentric businessman Howard Hughes, protagonist Cliff Seckard can fly at tremendous speed and, by doing so, earn some unwanted attention. Meanwhile, 1930s America is lousy with secret Nazi agents whose faces are all in need of punching. When the two combine, you get an exciting and interesting film based on Dave Stevens' Rocketeer comics that still stands up today. Ryan Reynolds spun a career-defining triumph at a total humiliation with Deadpool. While he technically plays Wade Wilson in 2009's X-Men Origins Wolverine, that movie's version of Deadpool has functionally nothing in common with Marvel's beloved absurdist antihero. Reynolds and director Tim Miller made darn sure to get Wade right on the second try. After he's left permanently disfigured but also unkillable by brutal experimentation, Wade Wilson becomes Deadpool, a fourth-wall-breaking maniac out for revenge. I got places to be, a face to fix, and oh, bad guys to kill. What results is loaded with stunningly gratuitous violence, gut-busting hilarity, and one of the greatest X-Men team-ups ever. Black Widow is an explosive espionage endeavor which provides an effective bridge between disparate parts of the MCU. Natasha Romanoff is eager to leave her past behind, but the other Black Widows created in the fearsome Red Room need her help. So does Yelena, the woman who once posed as her little sister. Florence Pugh's inaugural turn as Yelena is so excellent, it immediately caused fans to wonder when she'd be getting her own trilogy. Loosely inspired by a 1982 miniseries by Chris Claremont and Frank Miller, The Wolverine sends Hugh Jackman's Logan on a self-contained adventure in Japan, far away from any reminder of the other X-Men. There, he's stripped of his healing ability, confronted with the ghosts of his past, and forced to battle high-tech samurai. The Wolverine feels like the first cinematic X-Men tale in which Logan's virtual immortality meaningfully informs the story, which proves to be a memorable hook. The final entry in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy offers a colossal, chaotic, and ultimately fitting close to Christian Bale's tenure under the cowl. Bane, a masked revolutionary, is out to reduce Gotham City to rubble. Part of this plan sees him destroy Bruce Wayne's life in every possible way. 
Batman will need all of his cleverness, strength, and resolve to emerge from the pit Bane consigns him to, but even that might not be enough. While the inaugural pair of DCEU movies, Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman, are known for their polarizing grimness, Shazam offers a much brighter take on its source material that still manages to keep its feet on the ground. During an otherwise normal subway ride, young Billy Batson comes in contact with an ancient wizard who names Billy his champion. Empowered to become the grown-up superhero Shazam whenever he speaks that magical name aloud, Billy gains new abilities that help him fight Dr. Savannah, but more importantly, they allow him to bond with his foster family. Eventual prestige filmmaker Guillermo del Toro guides what could have been a rote supernatural martial arts caper into an achievement of campy B-movie blood and guts in this killer film. Evil vampires recruit human-vampire hybrid Blade to help them fight even eviler vampires. Can this unlikely team-up prevail before the planet is scoured of all life? Blade 2 is exciting, bizarre, and entertaining as heck. Ooh, so exciting. Its only flaw? It might also leave you with an inflated notion of techno music's popularity during the early aughts. Not long after the first Hellboy came out, Guillermo del Toro went from being a highly respected mid-level horror fantasy director to the brains behind an Oscar-nominated dark fairy tale. His enhanced reputation is reflected in the scope and aesthetic sensibilities of the sequel. The titular demonic hero takes on a tremendously powerful mechanical army in this one, as well as the uncaring world. What's a big red member of Hell's royal family to do? Describing it as Blade 2 going one-on-one -on -one with Pan's Labyrinth and a demolition derby feels like an oversimplification, but it's also the most accurate way to describe the Golden Army. Tom Holland's second solo Spider-Man sojourn sends a gang from the Midtown School of Science and Technology on a European field trip. Peter hopes to take a break from doing Spider-Man stuff and spend some time with MJ. You should pack your suit just in case. I have a tingle about it. Please stop saying tingle, May. Of course, inexplicable attacks from building-sized elemental monsters screw that plan up entirely. Good thing the evidently benign Quentin Beck is here to help, right? All the while, Peter and the world grieve Tony Stark, who seems to have left an unfillable chasm at the heart of the superheroic world. Kneel before I saw it. A source of that iconic line, Superman 2 cranks up the volume on the wide-eyed, golden age of comic-style kookiness of the first Superman. Kryptonian conquerors have arrived on Earth and decide to take it for their own. Superman must stop them while also nurturing his burgeoning romance with Lois Lane. In 1980, it had barely occurred to anyone that superheroes could be ridden with angst. Superman 2 is gritty and raw by the standards of its day, which means it's a refreshingly balanced production to modern eyes. The launch of a whole new Batman begins as an obsessive, grim iteration of Bruce Wayne prowls a particularly dark Gotham City. The Batman places extra emphasis on the caped crusader's reputation as a detective as he hunts a flamboyant serial killer version of the Riddler and unravels a criminal conspiracy that ties together many of Gotham's business and political elites. To his shock, this includes Thomas Wayne. A retelling of one of history's earliest superhero stories and the definitive modern Zorro movie, The Mask of Zorro vibrates on both old and current frequencies. Here, an epic team-up between the original Zorro, fresh from prison, and the new Zorro takes place. They're both aiming to take down a corrupt governor and his villainous henchmen, but bringing him to his knees won't be easy. Adventure, romance, and glamour are all on offer here, set off by no small amount of flair. No bad? No bad at all. The third Spider-Man movie starring Tom Holland is a culmination of almost two decades' worth of storytelling across two major film studios and three fictional universes. It's hard to even imagine such a scenario ever coming to pass, just as it's hard to imagine a more heartfelt celebration of the wall crawler's legacy in movies. Peter Parker has accidentally ripped open the multiverse, which draws enemies from the Spideyverses headed up by Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Add in some devastating losses and an unforgettable choice that will change Peter's life forever, you have a truly great modern superhero movie. Before he can be unthawed in modern times and introduced to the rest of Earth's mightiest heroes, young Steve Rogers must become a science experiment gone haywire, a mascot for the American military, and finally, the Allies' premier one-man Nazi killing machine. Can one juiced-up kid from Brooklyn truly make a difference on the battlefields of World War II? That's exactly what we're gonna do. But not without help. Haley Atwell is a particularly strong ally. She generates an onslaught of charisma, solidifying Agent Peggy Carter's MCU presence into the indefinite future. Literally 20 years ahead of its time, Mystery Men clearly would have been a gargantuan hit in 2019. Its sensibilities run alongside superhero satires like The Boys and Deadpool. Mr. Furious's power is that he gets really, really angry. The Shoveler shovels exceptionally well. Carol carries a bowling ball that's haunted by the poltergeist of her overbearing father. Captain Amazing is a big-name crime fighter far more obsessed with his image than saving the world. 
Together, they're out to save Champion City. While we didn't appreciate it during its debut, we can at least celebrate Mystery Men today as one of the first truly offbeat cape flicks. The Suicide Squad towers over its similarly named 2016 predecessor. This time around, Amanda Waller deploys a squadron of villains and misfits to Cordo Maltese, aiming to neutralize the murky Project Starfish. As is usually the case with Amanda Waller, not all is as it seems. Voicing King Shark, Sylvester Stallone is essentially the cannibalistic root of this movie. That alone is worth checking out, but it helps that this archaic joyride also features Margot Robbie's irresistible Harley Quinn and John Cena's hilarious debut as Peacemaker. Whether Scott Pilgrim himself deserves superhero status is clearly a debatable matter. However, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is definitely a comic book movie with superheroes in it. This is Michael Sarah being as Michael Sarah as ever in the lead role, who must fight the seven evil exes of mysterious Ramona Flowers if he wants to date her. Prepare to feel the wrath of the League of Evil Exes. League of Evil Exes? You really don't know about the League? Infused with video game and indie rock references, Scott Pilgrim is a self-aware action-packed romp that's a joy to watch from beginning to end. Chris Evans, Brandon Routh, and Brie Larson all throw down in the supporting cast. After 2000's X-Men demonstrated that superhero movies could be financially viable again, Sam Raimi stepped up to the plate with this take on the iconic wall crawler. Spider-Man is a comic book movie that unapologetically behaves like a comic book movie. Peter Parker's journey from hapless nerd to diligent superhero is completely and thrillingly classic. In battling the Green Goblin, he must decide what sacrifices he's truly willing to make. This dynamite movie reminds us once again that great power and great responsibility are like cream cheese and bagels. The first is no good without the second. Tim Burton's Batman established the template for modern bat flicks, where Adam West's Bruce of the 60s tells us to fasten our seatbelts and look both ways before crossing the street. Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne will get nuts if circumstances demand that he do so. Now you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Or, you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? And boy, do they demand it. He must face off against Jack Nicholson's Joker in this flick, who so ably performs the role that it took Heath Ledger's career-defining take on the Joker to eclipse him. This Gotham City is weird, mean, glamorous, and still one of a kind. In this rollicking flick, Star-Lord, aka Peter Quill, assembles his ragtag crew of outcasts to keep an Infinity Stone out of the hands of intergalactic warlord Ronan the Accuser. If you're watching the MCU through for the first time, keep an eye on those Infinity Stones. They turn out to be pretty important. James Gunn somehow lulls us into suspending disbelief for the sake of implausible characters like Rocket Raccoon and Groot, a tree who can only say, I am Groot. What results is electric, bizarre, and immensely fun. You can't have a real conversation about superhero movies without a lot of focus on Batman. And you can't have a real conversation about Batman in media without discussing Batman the Animated Series. The theatrically released Batman Mask of the Phantasm is basically a feature-length episode of the series. It's also one of the most effective deep dives into the Dark Knight's inner motivations and conflicts ever committed to celluloid. Here, the Caped Crusader must confront his past when a masked killer cuts a wide swath through Gotham City's underground. But the truth is even more intense than he could ever have imagined. Tony Stark is a spoiled, brilliant war profiteer shocked into humility by a brutal kidnapping. Upon escape, he decides to change the trajectory of his life and put the superpowered armor he's built to good use. Unfortunately, not all of his business partners are crazy about this idea. Iron Man could stand on its own as an entirely solid techno action endeavor, but it becomes something truly special in its historically crucial post credits scene. Believe it or not, back in 2008, folks didn't understand they had to sit through the credits of Marvel movies. This flick changed that forever. While its legacy is dominated by the onset death of 28-year-old star Brandon Lee, The Crow successfully channeled the grim urban warfare and mortal ambiguity of 80s comics years before the DCEU did. When musician Eric Draven rises from the dead, he discovers he has fantastic abilities. He uses them to seek revenge on the street gang that killed him and his one true love. The Crow is intensely dark and violent, but in a way that never feels mopey or gratuitous. It is simply a broken-hearted superhero film that embraces love and loss with open, black-feathered wings. Placing the third installment to the MCU's Iron Man series this prominently on an all-time list might be considered controversial in some circles, but we're confident in this decision. Come on! Following the events of The Avengers, Tony Stark is at loose ends. The arrival of the mysterious terrorist known as the Mandarin makes things worse, to say nothing of the rocky road he and Pepper Potts have begun to walk. Iron Man 3 contains a clever second-act swerve, one of Gwyneth Paltrow's best MCU turns, and barrels of acid quippery. Also, a bunch of people fall out of an exploding airplane at one point, and Iron Man figures out a way to rescue them all. It's awesome as heck. 
Until the day Avengers vs. Justice League enters production, Avengers Infinity War will remain the most crowded and ambitious multi-franchise crossover movie in existence. Intergalactic tyrant Thanos arrives on Earth to collect the only two Infinity Stones he hasn't yet captured. The hardest choices require the strongest wills. With the Avengers, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and so many other White Hats pulling together to halt Thanos' malicious grandiosity, surely the good guys can't lose, right? They'll have to try their hardest to stop the purple baddie from slaughtering half of all life in the universe, and even then, it might not be enough. The second half of the epic that begins with Avengers Infinity War wisely focuses on Tony Stark and Steve Rogers as they struggle to undo Thanos' cosmic massacre. Time travel might just be the ticket, but they won't succeed without incurring some wretching losses. Let me go. No. It all culminates in an unforgettable battle for all the marbles that people will be talking about for decades to come. Avengers Endgame elegantly ties off the saga of two fantasy adventure icons and launches the MCU into the future. Over the years, the deliciously dark Batman Returns has solidified its reputation as one of the Cape Crusader's most enduring cinematic escapades, as well as the best bat flick of the 90s. Michelle Pfeiffer permanently etched her image into the superhero genre with a definitive turn as Selina Kyle, who becomes Catwoman under intense duress. Danny DeVito is uproariously savage and sociopathic as the Penguin. And then there's Michael Keaton's Batman, who's attempting to keep both of them from permanently harming Gotham City. It's manic, stylish, and strange. In other words, absolutely perfect. Ironically, one of Disney's best superhero offerings has nothing to do with Marvel. State-mandated retirement forces Bob Parr, aka Mr. Incredible, to give up vigilanteism. His restlessness makes him easy prey for the manipulations of an enigmatic villain known as Syndrome, whose ambitions and career trajectory are not what they seem. Ladies and gentlemen, it's too much for Mr. Incredible! Luckily, Mr. Incredible's family is uniquely positioned to help him out of this jam as they, incidentally, also all have superpowers. Parenthood, suburban malaise, and good old-fashioned fisticuffs collide in this Pixar treasure. M. Night Shyamalan followed up his breakthrough The Sixth Sense with another Bruce Willis-led mindbender. Elijah Price, an obsessed comic book nerd with a rare bone disease, has a theory. If he was born much weaker than the average person, someone out there must have been born much stronger than the average person. He thinks he's found his inverse when David Dunn miraculously survives a train wreck that kills every other passenger, but David refuses to believe he's superhuman. Even if he is, there might be more to the story. Now that we know who you are, I know who I am. The first MCU entry from the Russo brothers is a twist-packed thriller as exciting as any alien-centric flick. Cap, Black Widow, and Nick Fury join forces to unravel a conspiracy with the potential to derail all of civilization. It especially pulls the rug out from under viewers with regards to S.H.I.E.L.D., the alleged good guys who might actually be irreparably infiltrated by terrorist network Hydra. In the midst of it all is the mysterious Winter Soldier, an assassin straight out of Steve Rogers' past. After Batman and Robin sucked the dignity out of the dynamic duo, the franchise wisely defaulted back to Batman's broody formative years. Why not send Junior home early? I've got some wild oats to sow. Best known at the time of the movie's debut for 2002's disorienting nail-biter Memento, director and co-writer Christopher Nolan presents a version of Gotham that feels truly unique. Bruce Wayne's origin story is on offer here, interpreted through an intensely gritty lens. He spends the first third of the film acquiring his de facto superhuman power of self-discipline. The rest, he devotes to weaponizing the shadows against the superstitious and cowardly. Where are you? Here. This might still not be enough to take down the terrifying Scarecrow, however. A full-blown cultural phenomenon upon its wildly successful 2018 debut, Black Panther remains the MCU's most thoughtful and thematically rich chapter. King T'Challa is introduced in Captain America Civil War, which frees Black Panther up to go beyond the typical origin story route. In this film, the new head of state navigates a messy geopolitical inheritance and confronts Wakanda's history of isolationism. When an estranged member of the royal family comes calling, T'Challa must decide what sort of king he wants to be and what sort of country he wants to lead. I must take the mantle back. I must. Plus, there's also a wicked boss car chase scene. Thor had multiple team-ups and solo movies under his belt by 2017, but The God of Thunder still hadn't found a clear cinematic identity, until director Taika Waititi took the reins. Informed by the psychedelic sensibilities of 1970s Marvel comics, Thor Ragnarok sends its hero through the intergalactic ringer. Stranded on the chaotic trash planet Sakaar, Thor is forced to engage in gladiatorial combat. Soon enough, he learns he's not alone. The strange Valkyrie are here too. Oh, and also the Hulk. Yes! 
but they're not exactly jazzed about his plan for escape or confronting Hela, his long-lost sister who's grinding Asgard beneath her boot. The themes of quite a few superhero movies basically boil down to a lead character grappling with daddy issues. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 bounces that subtext up to regular text, as Star-Lord finally encounters Ego, his biological father, a celestial being who might not be all that he seems. Speaking of father-son dynamics, Rocket Raccoon and Baby Groot establish themselves as comedy legends, as well as brutal killing machines. What is Ego's plan for the universe? Why did he leave in the first place? And what, oh what, is Baby Groot's favorite song to jam out to? The answers might surprise you. The original Superman happens to be the prototype for just about every other film on this list, but it's also a fantastic watch unto itself. What the hell is that? Easy, miss. I've got you. The familiar origin of the Man of Steel plays out with spectacular sci-fi grandeur, which manages to feel retro-cool rather than dated. Lex Luthor plans to kill Superman with a real estate scam, because it was the late 1970s and CGI tech capable of depicting a brainiac or Starro was not yet available. This doesn't hurt the movie, though. To modernize, it makes it downright refreshing. It helps that Christopher Reeve and Margot Kidder are freaking adorable as Lois and Clark. The MCU starts with Iron Man, but it doesn't feel completely real until its first full-blown crossover project. The Avengers let the world know that this business about a shared movie universe might have some staying power after all. A gathering of characters introduced in prior films, principally Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor, put aside their petty differences to save New York City from a mythological sorcerer aided by an army of cosmic goblins. As swarmy conqueror Loki, Tom Hiddleston steals the show, but everyone's firing on all cylinders. This is the modern superhero movie in many ways and will likely remain a classic for decades to come. The follow-up to 2002's highly encouraging Spider-Man doubles down on Peter Parker as a sad sack overburdened 20-something, while channeling director Sam Raimi's Evil Dead honed horror sensibilities into Alfred Molina's tragic Dr. Otto Octavius. Peter just can't seem to handle being Spider-Man in this film. His powers are on the fritz, his grades are slacking, and his love life is frayed. Is fighting crime really worth it? Meanwhile, Dr. Octavius, transformed into the villainous Doc Ock, threatens to destroy the city with his scientific experiments. But in truth, he's suffering an identity crisis of his own. Not unlike a man with extra mechanical arms, Spider-Man 2 expertly juggles multiple themes and plot lines. Simultaneously stuffed to the brim with deep dive references and providing a welcoming gateway for new fans, Into the Spider-Verse activates previously untapped potential in Spider-Man's origin story. A radioactive spider bites teenage Miles Morales, bestowing upon him the proportional strength and speed of an arachnid, plus invincibility and a very cool finger zap power. Following the death of Peter Parker, Miles must become the new Spider-Man and train under the guidance of… Peter Parker? Things get even more confusing when further spider heroes pop up from wildly different universes. You're like me. This mesmerizing film is particularly distinguished by its jaw-droppingly innovative animation. The end of Hugh Jackman's 17-year, nine-film run as the anchor of the X-Men movie franchise is one part hyper-violent dystopian adventure, one part mega-commentary on the modern superhero boom, and one part touching father-daughter bonding story. In a brutal future, the man known as Wolverine must shepherd mutantkind's future to safety in the form of Laura, a young girl with a mysterious past. Their journey is a tragic one, yet also spiked with hope. Logan, which practically drips gravitas out of its many stab wounds, is the rare superhero film that might make you cry. Why so serious? We'll tell you exactly why we're incredibly serious about The Dark Knight. It's the greatest superhero movie of all time and one of the better films of the 2000s overall. Director Christopher Nolan returns to Gotham and levels up from Batman Begins with a philosophical slobber knocker between the Joker's sadistic chaos and Batman's benevolent order. This is what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Heath Ledger won a posthumous Oscar for delivering a mass-murdering, bizarrely charming Joker who still pops on screen all these years later. Meanwhile, the rise and fall of Harvey Dent provides The Dark Knight with its thematic backbone, recommended for viewing at least once a year. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite superhero movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.